sister Watson, it's good to see you. She, we are both from the Central Village Seventh-day Adventist Church. When I just came to the church, she was there. And I'm happy to see you again. Auntie Yuna, why are you following me? I left your tent, see you, and I'll come here and see what is happening. It's good to see you. It's good to see all of you as we worship today. Now, I want you to know that it's not a cliche. It's not a cliche. One of these days, I want to be able to sing songs and sound as good as I have heard since morning. What to say amen to this music ministry of the church. It has been wonderful and God is to be praised for that. I have a few minutes so I'm going to hasten on. The scripture was ably read and I just want to talk to you from Psalm 100 about because of who you are. Because of who you are. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was hurrying in Mandeville town, trying to get to Spanish town one Friday evening before the sun set, because I wanted to go to my barber to get a haircut. That's right. If I don't trim myself, it's one person who trims me and that's my barber. And he's here in Spanish town, I said, if I want a good trim, I'll come home. And so I was hastening on in Mandeville town. The sidewalk was crowded. It was slowing me down. And so I decided to venture on the road. Suddenly I felt the back of my shoe beginning to peel off my, my right foot. When I turned around, my right foot was under the front wheel of a taxi. When I pull it out, it was okay and I praise God. But as I read Psalm 100, I realized that very often we praise God for what he does and that's good. But more imp importantly, we ought to praise God for who he is. Because it's who God is that allows him to do what he does. And so because God is good, he shows forth goodness to us. We will look in Psalm 100 and find out this afternoon who God is and why we should praise him. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for this privilege to worship and to glorify your holy name. As you open your holy words, we ask now that you will speak to us through them. Do not hide me behind the cross. But may the power of the cross be seen through a sinner like me. And now I pray and stand with the assurance that the Spirit of the Lord God now is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. And so as I preach today, Father, she did feed a sheep through me in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 100. That's what we're talking about this afternoon. It is often called the Jubilate, a Latin word for all oh, let us rejoice, all oh, let us praise the Lord. You know it well, you can repeat it from mind. It is one of the most used psalm in public worship. A matter of fact, many praise songs, hymns and worship songs have been written based on Psalm 100. The author on the occasion of its writing is not known, yet it is the only psalm in the Bible that has the inscription, a psalm of thanksgiving. The only psalm that bears that inscription. From ancient times, it was used in temple worship, whether in offering of sacrifice in entering the temple, this psalm was used. And although it is a brief psalm, it is very eloquently written. It has two stanzas, and in these two stanzas, we find a call to worship and a reason to do so. And so this hymn was well written. We find that God ought to be praised for who he is and what he does. And so I want us this afternoon 
just to reflect on these two stanzas. Stanza one gives us an exhortation. The first exhortation is to praise the Lord joyfully. It is to joyfully praise the Lord. One version says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Another says, shout joyfully to the Lord. Regardless of what is, how the sentences are written, the idea is God is deserving of our praise. And it says to all the earth, all the world, praise the Lord. Worship belongs to all people. So we are creatures of worship. We were created by God to worship Him. And so, brothers and sisters, I might not be able to sing like many of you who sung just a while ago. But my Bible says to me, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And so when you see me in the sanctuary and I'm lifting up holy hands, you need to understand I'm worshiping my God. Are you hearing me? But you know, we allow certain churches to behave as if they have the they are the only persons who have the right to praise. And so if you come into a Seventh-day Adventist church and you feel like shouting for joy, they will tell you to sit down. They will say to you, be quiet. But I want you to understand, those who praise God are those who understand who God is and what He does. And so if you see me praise my God, it's because I know my God. I know who He is. I know who He is. It says, make joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve Him with gladness. Serve Him, and we speak about coming to church services. But sometimes we come to church, we have some undescribable faces. As if God is dead, and He has done nothing for us in the week. But when I come into God's house, and you see me stamping my feet, and I'm shouting for joy, you can understand that I serve Not only that, the psalmist gave us reason to praise God. He said, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. He is the only God. There is none like Him before Him or after Him. He is the sovereign God, the supreme God. There is none like Him. Oh, yes, He is the supreme God, the self existing God. The self-determining God. There is no God like our God. And so we must make a joyful noise because the Lord is God. Yahweh is God. He is worthy of our worship. Oh, he goes on to say, It is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. The psalmist is pointing us back to Genesis 1 and 2 where God is our creator, we are in the beginning God. That's what the psalmist is saying to us. It is He who had created us and not we ourselves. Yes, the God we serve is creator. He is the author. He is the initiator. He is the source of our existence. And so when you see me shouting for joy, understand that a monkey is not my fault, parents, but I came from the hand of a living God, for I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? We have reasons to praise God. Yes, he says, for we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We speak about God's guiding hand. Can you remember how God has protected you throughout the week? Yes, He is our shepherd. He is the one who has been and continues to protect us. Had it not been for God who was on our side, when the enemies rose up on us, they would have devoured us. But we have a shepherd. We have a rock in a weary land, a cooling shade on the burning sand, a faithful God. Not with me, brothers and sisters. I start to know your hymnal. I start to know your hymnal, and I have to be hasting on. So bear with me. Yes, we 
We worship God. We make joyful noise. We worship Him with gladness because of who He is and what He does. He is the supreme creator who protects us. And as we recognize this, it should automatically send us in a praise mode. And so when you see me jumping for joy and shouting, you can understand that I serve a risen Savior who's in the world today. When we learn of God's goodness and of His personage, it incites in us praise, glory, and honor towards God. The second stanza, hastening on quickly, it is an exhortation to enter the presence of the Lord. It says, enter His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and what? And praise His name for the Lord He is. He's good. Last week, you had plenty and you praised the Lord. This week, you may have little. Will you still praise the Lord? We cannot praise God based on circumstances. Our praise must come forth by recognition of who God is. For if God is not worthy of praise for who He is, it's best to become a master. If God is not worthy of praise for who He is, it's best I become a Muslim. But because I know who my God is, because I know whom I have believed in, and I know that He's able to keep me from falling, I sing glory to my God. I say, praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, blessed Redeemer. I can praise Him today. Now, enter His gates and His courts. You get the imagery of going into Jerusalem and into the temple. What a wonder it is that sinful men and women can enter into the presence of the most holy God. Think about it. The sun against the butter. Think about it. Sinful men enabled to go in the presence of the most holy God. Yes. We are able to do this because God is good. That's why we are able to do that. Because God is good. God is the source of goodness. And I want you to understand that God's goodness has been demonstrated to us in His creative and redeeming love. The Bible says that God demonstrated His love toward us. In that while we were strong, while we were holy, while we were righteous, while we were just, while we were without sin, no, the Bible said that but while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, came down to earth in gloom to resurrect us out of sin. And I said, thanks be to God for His goodness. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness. You understand that the world continues to exist and to function with the laws of nature because there's a God who is unchanging. His love is unchanging, his faithfulness is unchanging, and that is why we are here today. All because of who God is. And so when you, when you find yourself in a good situation, when you find yourself in good standing, remember that it's God who because of His goodness has come through for you. It is not of your own bidding, it is not of your own good, but because of the goodness of Jesus. The songwriter says, I know the time I wish I could sing. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Thank God for saving me when I think of his goodness. The songwriter said, Your grace. Are you with me? Brought. 
I'm living because of you. Oh, is there someone who wants to thank him? Is there someone who wants to praise him? You know who your God is. You know what he has done for you. Oh, what a praise we're going to give him. Come on now, sing it like you mean it. I wish I could sing now.